human behavior. We call it psychology, right? We call it, we, we name things the id, the, the ego, the superego, all this kind of stuff. And then we have something that's new. But it's not really new. It's just something that's been named. Greetings, everyone. I hope you are all doing well this week. So this video is going to be a follow-on from last week's. But before I get started, please, would you kindly go to my Odyssey? The link is in the description. Follow me on Odyssey. Leave a comment on one of my videos. Say hello, etc., etc. I would really very much appreciate your uh, support on Odyssey. I did notice a bump in Odyssey followers lately, so I want to thank you very much for that. Now, the topic of this week's video has to do with the question I raised last week. And it has to do with the statement, there is nothing new under the sun. Because I think about this sometimes, and I've been thinking about this often, and I realize there's many ways to interpret this. And so I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on this, and I do thank you for your comments. There were some very insightful comments on last week's video, so I'm going to read them right now, at least a few of them. So the first uh, response here is from Chicken Salad. Chicken Salad says, Under it all, it is all seen and done by others before you, and those ahead will also experience the same and go through it as you do. So I'm going to read the entire thing, and then I'll go uh, line by line here. Another way I could interpret it would be everything is already been and has been done in a way or has been in a way done and then finally chicken salad says you could also see it as the parameters that nothing new would be born under the sun so there's three uh kind of slightly different ways to view that so i'm going to respond to the first one i think that one's really good um you say under it all it is seen and done by others before you and those ahead will also experience the same and go through it as you do. So what that means, at least the way I'm interpreting it, and you can you know, reply to this uh, video, of course, if I've, if I've got something wrong, but the way I interpret that is something along the lines of those who have experience something or something that um, people have that have come before have been through something and remember we're talking about consciousness we're talking about the human experience we're not talking about new things we're not talking about this thing was created and it's new and you know it has to do with objects in the physical world that's not what we're talking about so you know we're, we're talking about expanding conscious awareness here and kind of the human experience perception and experience consciousness, that kind of thing. So the way I see that first uh, statement there, really others before you and those, um, those, those that, that have come before us experience invariably um, similar kind of stages in life, similar experiences. And so in that sense, I could, I could really understand how, you know, that makes sense as far as like saying there's nothing new under the sun. And now I think you could just say that, you know, you could just, you could just use the statement, there's nothing new in human experience and that would also apply. But then we're leaving out nothing new under the sun. We're leaving out the sun part. We're leaving out uh, light as an important part. So I want to, I'll, I'll address that here in a moment. But I definitely think that um, not everyone has the exact same experience, obviously, but in general, we have different stages of life, different experiences, we go through different things. And so in that sense, I agree with you that there's nothing new um, that uh, others wouldn't have experienced in some general way. It may be slightly different, but in general, it's, there's really nothing new in that regard in terms of the human experience, um, I would say, in a general sense. Now the other uh, part, you say another way you can interpret it. The second line here would be, everything is already been and has been and, and done uh, in a way. I would guess I would just ask you to maybe expand on that because I 
I think we need some more detail on that because I don't quite understand. And it's, I think maybe some more details, if you could offer that, uh, would help me understand what you're saying there. I think I understand the first line. Um, if I've got something wrong there, let me know. The third one, you could also see it as the parameters that nothing new would be born under the sun. Um, so let me think about that. The parameters that nothing new would, and, and in this case, you're involving the sun, which is good because remember, we have to, we have to treat the entire statement, nothing new under the sun. So we have to, you know, somehow find a way to link the sun to this, right? Or, or, or something to do with the sun. Um, so in this sense, in, in the third line, you're saying, um, I'm not sure what you mean by the parameters that nothing new would be born under the sun. I guess I would ask you to clarify the sec, uh, the third statement as well, because I'm not, I don't even know what you would mean by that either. So, but thank you so much for your comment, um, for your comments there. And, um, okay, so let's go to the next one. Next one is from Joel. And Joel says this, when I hear this, I think of the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching, or the Tao Te Ching, the Tao that can be told, is not the eternal Tao. Under sun means, in my mind, something that has been named or given meaning from potentiality. That's a very insightful comment. I really like that. Because, uh, and I'll just go on to read the rest of the comment. When we assign meaning in this way, we kind of cut it off from infinite possibility. Thus, there can be nothing new. This is the nature of this reality. When you read Genesis, it also refers to how we assign meaning to the world in a similar way. So this is a very good comment. And, you know, when uh, something has, we, we haven't prescribed any sort of name for it, meaning, um, then in that sense, it hasn't been illuminated, has it? So, you know, when we're talking about the sun, we're talking about light, we're talking about really pointing our conscious awareness to something, right? Bringing it into our mode of, bringing it into a mode of conscious awareness. Now we do that primarily with language. We don't have to but that's how we can then take some sort of observation or some sort of conscious awareness understanding and then try to bring that to another person who may not see that, who may not have a name for that, may not have, um, you know, it, it's funny because before we have a name for something, we have to sort of have a notion of noticing it, of kind of, you know, having an, having an in, intuitive sense that, okay, there's something here that I'm not, I don't have kind of a way to describe it, and yet it's there, and how do I understand that, right? And and then maybe some other person will come along. Maybe you have this sense in, in yourself for years and years about some sort of notion, okay, about some life experience, or about yourself, or about others, about the world, whatever whatever it is that's kind of hiding behind the the curtain of conscious awareness and then you read a book or you hear someone say something and you go oh wow I, that's exactly i never had words for that before but now i have words for that because of this book i read or because of this person that i listened to and they explained this thing and this, i have always felt that and oh my goodness and so um I think that's kind of parallel to what you're saying here, Joel. Now, the Tao Te Ching, um, I think, you know, the way I interpret that, um, this this quote you put here, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. It's, it reminds me of like Ken Wilber um, when he says that you really shouldn't confuse the map for the landscape. Okay, the map being language, being kind of our approximate descriptors of reality 
in, uh, you know, and then you have actual reality, um, which is completely unnameable, unfathomable. It's, it's completely, it exists in, in a dynamic real time sense and that as soon as we put some sort of language to it, we've already killed it. Because language is dead information, right? Um, and what I mean by that is as soon as you write something down, it's out of date. Okay. You can write something about how you feel. You could write something about what you think about the world. Or you can write about an event. It doesn't really matter. But as soon as you write it down, reality just keeps going. And it doesn't like, you know, things don't sort of stand still. You write about something and it's just, that was the time that you wrote it was, it's kind of a snapshot, but that's dead information, right? Because it doesn't really take on a life of its own in a sense. So Joel, that was a very good comment. So let me sort of uh, kind of, uh, briefly talk about what it means to me, the statement, there's nothing new under the sun. So I'll, I'll give an example. Okay. Before Freud, there wasn't anything called psychology. There weren't, there, there wasn't any sort of uh, vernacular to explain kind of this realm of human behavior, the ego, the id, the superego, uh, these kind of, this lexicon didn't exist at all. And then, and then you know, uh, Carl Jung came along and it really got quite a lot more popular after that. However, the unspoken understanding of human behavior, okay, existed thousand, for thousands of years, okay? It existed in spiritual texts. And it is said that uh, Freud, who was Jewish, uh, derived, he put, he put names and words, and the Kabbalists say that, and I tend to believe this, that um, Freud kind of teased out in a secular way the spiritual, uh, maybe largely sort of non-named, understanding of human behavior, he kind of teased that out from uh, Jewish mysticism, mystical thinking, and kind of gave that more of a secular sort of, uh, uh, you know, outfit to wear. And then, of course, it explains why Jung came along and made it more popular. Well, why? Well, because, you know, Jung put a decidedly more sort of Western Christian sort of outfit on that thinking. If you think about it, he really did. And and in the West, most uh, Westerners being, um, you know, at least raised in a Christian sense, um, took to that a lot more than they would with Freud. Um, because, you know, to a lot of... Um, Christians, uh, Jewish thought is seemingly, um, you know, kind of uh, contrary in some ways, or kind of, kind of different. Uh, and so, that's just kind of one example I think of when you know there's nothing new under the sun, and then we have this, you know, we create this map of this, mech, this this lexicon of words and this kind of um, structure. And we call it human behavior. We call it psychology, right? We call it, we, we name things the id, the, the ego, the superego, all this kind of stuff. And then we have something that's new. But it's not really new. It's just something that's been named. It's something that's, it's something that's been an understanding um, for thousands of years, an understanding of human behavior and what we are and what we're, you know, comprised of and kind of our dual nature of this sense of, you know, a higher sense of self, a morality and ethics, and then a very 
uh, kind of animalistic, lower sense of self, right? And then we kind of just create this this world of, uh, or this map. We create a map, an active map that can, uh, that has these waypoints, that has, that have these particular features on the map that approximate, they, they point to and they describe in, in an approximate way, because language is never a one for one, right? It doesn't, it's not a one for one relationship with reality. It's just kind of an approximate descriptor of reality. So that's kind of how I think I initially took that uh, to mean. But when I, when I think about it lately, there's nothing new under the sun. And I think about it in, the ter- in terms of just like consciousness and expanding consciousness, okay? learning, growing, trying to understand more, trying to see how things are integrally linked, then the way I interpret it, at least, you know, and, and I think there's there's valid, there's many valid interpretations depending on your level of consciousness, depending on where you're currently at in your life and what you're seeing, your you know, where's your consciousness? Is it, is, is it, you know, at what level are you at? Are you expanded to a certain degree? And then, and throughout your life, the more your conscious, your consciousness expands. It's funny because the more these ancient axioms kind of open up and lend more meaning. It's very interesting. So now for me, there's nothing new under the sun. I've been thinking about it in terms of when there's something that's not understood, not seen, okay, by someone, by people in general, let's say, some kind of, um, there's, there's some sort of blind spot in our consciousness, okay? We, have, we all have blind spots. I have blind spots. We all have them. But let's say you have some sort of blind spot in your consciousness and you're not seeing the world as it truly is. You're just kind of seeing what has been fed to you, how you're conditioned. It's very common, right? We have this kind of, and remember, it's very, it's very easy to create a matrix because if you create a world through words and words create images in the mind, then depending on the words I use, I can paint a picture in your mind Okay, because I have a general idea of the words that I'm going to use are going to light up certain things in your brain. You know, there's certain words that really catch people and get them either to react, you know, there's, and so when I, when I think about using language in that way, when I think about, you know, how the establishment used this language and how they they use this language to really kind of condition people, right? It means that, you know, using language can be sort of a way to hold a map up in front of someone that may not be accurate, may not have, uh, may not tell the story of the actual landscape of reality. In, in fact, I know that's not the case because you know, a lot of perceptions about, uh, a lot of perceptions that people have about the world, each other, and perceptions they have about themselves are completely false. And I realize, I realize that about myself in a lot of ways. And so there's nothing new under the sun. It's very interesting to me now because I think that what I've been, the way I've been looking at it lately is like this. If I don't see reality as it is, okay, and there's, and instead I allow some, someone, including myself, to insist that whatever the map is that I'm holding in front of myself with these, with, with this language, with this kind of, uh, way of, you know, thinking, that isn't doesn't really represent the landscape 
then um, I'm kind of in this sort of, you know, trap in, in a certain way. But if, I, if I'm somehow, if I learn something about the world and I look at the map, I look at the world, I look at the map again, I go, wait, well, wait a minute. Both of these, one of these isn't true. And then I go and have an experience in the world and I realize, oh, this thing on the map, this, this feature or this waypoint or what have you, this point on the map doesn't match reality. Okay. What I've been told is a lie. And this, when I go to this reality and really interact with it, and I realize, well, wait a minute, there's a problem here. And so when I think there's nothing new under the sun, when I think about that statement, then I start to realize that once that new realization comes into view and I can, I can either discard the map or, or at least update the map, right? I want to kind of make some notes on the map and say, well, actually it isn't this way and this is how I'm currently experiencing it, okay? Then once something is brought to the light of day, okay? Because we have to involve the sun here because the sun in that statement really, to me, at least in, in my, you know, in, in my point in this, in my life, in this experience and, you know, what is this, June 2024, at least right now, I can't say it's going to mean this forever, but at least in this point, it means to me that once something is seen as it is, okay, then it no longer ceases, it, it's no longer a new thing, okay, in that, you know, something that's new Um, as soon, like, I'll say this, as soon as I update my map of understanding of something, okay, which means, you know, my thought about something may have been wrong, and so I have to rewrite that, I have to reprogram that. The programmer reprogrammers, Philip K. Dick has talked about. And thanks to uh, Wesley Edwards, by the way, for for um, doing, doing your work on um, Minority Report and doing all the work you're doing on Philip K. Dick, because I feel like that's really influenced me. Check out his channel, by the way, guys, Wesley Edwards Art. Sorry, I kind of buried that towards the end of this video. I'll have to promote uh, Wes's stuff more in the beginning. So um, there's nothing new under the sun to me really truly means, and I know this is kind of a long-winded video, and you know, most people have the attention span of a mosquito, and, and I get that. But if you've gone this far, I hope this uh, leaves an impression for you because, you know, nothing new under the sun really makes me think like when I kind of put the map down and I just kind of observe reality as it is, then, then it's, then it's, no, it's like when the light of consciousness is, is, is focused purely on reality, then things seem so incredibly obvious and they're not new. It's not a surprise, it's not new. And so the more I practice not having this map created by society, created by the establishment media, created by people that have some sort of agenda that just want me to buy a bunch of garbage I don't need, right? The more I put the map down and I interface directly with reality, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, seeing people as they are, accepting people as they are, or just observing reality, observing myself, re, uh, you know, as soon as I do that, I'm not shocked by anything. I'm not, I'm not constantly looking at the map, looking at the reality, and being like confused because it doesn't match up. Because why? Because I'm putting the map down completely and I'm not referencing the map anymore. I'm just allowing, accepting what's in front of me, observing it. And then it just seems like that's just how it is. And it doesn't seem new. Okay. So that's what it means for me. I know this is very esoteric, intuitive, right? 
I know a few of you guys out there, guys and gals have, um, have a sense of what I'm, what I'm trying to elucidate here. And so I hope that helps you. Have yourself a wonderful week and I'll see you on the next video.